So if I look a little sweaty, it's because I've just been across town picking up a little mystery package from Arturia. And if the title of the video didn't, didn't give it away, I'm pretty sure that the box is. So let's see what's in here. Look here, an Arturia hat, which is, yeah, which is really nice because uh, as my fans know, I don't really buy clothes. It's, um, it's a little snug. Now, even though I've already made some content with the Micro Freak, I haven't actually, uh, I haven't actually played it myself. I wanted to have that experience for myself here in the studio. So this is genuinely the first time I'm actually sitting down with the Micro Freak. So my initial thoughts about the build quality is that it's a sturdy plastic enclosure. The much debated keys on the unit actually feels nice from a, from a build quality standpoint. On camera, the whole unit and especially the keys might look a little toyish, but that's not the case when you actually get to touch it. Knobs and buttons all feel kind of nice. Whoops, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, so let's try it out. <laughs> cool. Pretty nice. There's actually a really nice representation here of the cutoff and the resonance here, as you can see. On the screen, it's very responsive, so it's very nice. I think what excites me the most with this synth is actually the chill sounds. Very nice indeed. You can hear those very beautiful uh, wave shaped sort of movements. I think that's very cool. So to me here, the keys are actually quite uh, playable. But 
as you might have noticed, I'm not a keyboard player. So I think if you're used to normal keys, this might feel very weird. But to me, you know, the, the lack of travel distance isn't really a much of a problem. I kind of, I kind of enjoyed this actually. If someone were to ask me like, what's the unique selling point of a synth like this in terms of sound, I would say is listen to this sound here, not because it's super beautiful, but because it shows kind of how, how you can create really interesting movement. So you hear all that movement in the sound? That's very cool. thing that the cameras might not capture is that these lines here are actually a little bit elevated so you can feel when you're sliding from one key to another which is really nice <laughs> Let's see if we can make a little sequence here. It seems like you hold shift and press the sick here. Um, okay, okay, step recording. Step one. Okay, let's do it. And how do I engage this? So this is actually quite cool. You can record into the sequencer changes to the waveform, which is, yeah, I think that could be very funny. Yep. You get the idea. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I'm actually quite impressed by the bass sounds on this unit. Like the, the two types of sounds that kind of impresses me is probably the bass sounds and these like really weird, almost like esoteric or yeah, moving soundscapes. I think it's because of just the digital oscillator and we're so used to this realm of analog that has been so prevalent uh, these last few years. And there's just something really cool with hearing all those yeah, wave shapes change over time, which is interesting. <laughs> Wow. 
And one thing to keep in mind here is that when we change the waveform, we're radically changing the sound. So let me play a sequence here. So you can hear how much of a variation we got right right there with just the uh, oscillators, which is kind of cool. I really think the bass sounds are impressive. All right, let's try and make a sound from scratch using the Microfreak. Now I haven't RTFM'd, I haven't read the manual, so it might go all wrong, but let's see here. So these are different uh, wavetables or waveforms, um, and we can change them up as well. Let's enable paraphonic mode. Let's send some of the envelope to the filter. God damn it, I thought I saved it. Let's let's redo it. So let's do cycling envelope to timber. All right, cool. So you can shape your envelope, it's very immediate. And you set the amount over here. So now you can hear how the timber changes with the envelope. I want to do LFO to wave. What happens if I do that? this? Let's see here. Okay, so obviously LFO to wave just cycles through the different types, I suppose. Cool, okay, cool. So you can assign it just like on the matrix boot. So if I hold down assign two here and I change this, oh, VCO parameter three. Let's, let's do it instead like this LFO to shape. And let's turn off the LFO to wave so we can actually hear. Wait, how do I? Okay, there we go. Turning off LFO to wave. And let's set the amount of LFO to the shape.
Okay, pretty easy. I mean, this wasn't too hard to make something that sounds decent, I suppose. This is cool. If we hold shift and we use the cycling envelope here, we can actually change the shape. You probably can't see it very well, but we can change the shape of the of the rise. And we can change the shape of the fall. So yeah, that's pretty much how you make a sound on it. That wasn't too hard. Now, can I save it? Preset saved. Whoa, I, I did it. I did it. So this was a first little look here at the Micro Freak from Arturia. Is this a synth you're interested in or is it something that you probably will skip? Let me know in the comment section. And what kind of content do you want to see with this? Is this something you're interested in? Let me know. And as always, if you want to support, you can always pick up a Bow Beats t-shirt. Um, yeah, um, to be cool like I am. And other ways to support is through Patreon, patreon.com slash bowbeats. All the help I get there goes into making even more videos about synths. So thank you so much for being here and I'll talk to you later.